Today, I wanna to show you 10 drone moves you need to know if you're gonna film anything with a drone. And we're gonna start with the pullback shot. The pullback shot is great if you're going to reveal stuff, but you wanna start on a subject so that people know what they're looking at and then pull back and reveal a whole bunch of information around your subject. It's a really good one. It's popularly called Drony, which is great because it also means there's an automated mode in most drones about it. And if you're using a Mode 2 controller, then what you're gonna do is pull back with the stick on the right and then maybe add a slight bit of elevation gauge by pushing up the stick on the left. And then you get this beautiful reveal shot that starts on a subject and then pulls back to reveal the area your subject's in. This drone shot is probably my staple go-to for almost anything, and it's in orbit. The great thing is, it's really pretty simple to do manually, and I definitely think you should do it manually, but we're just gonna move around a subject, and all it's doing is showing off the location and the area that your subject's in. Or maybe you're gonna orbit around a building and a piece of real estate to show off that piece of real estate in an area. It's really simple, you're just gonna move the right stick either to the left or the right, and you're gonna move the left stick either to the left or the right, but opposite the direction that you're moving the right stick to. So if you're gonna push left, then the left stick is gonna go right. If you're gonna push right, the right stick is gonna go left. And a great thing about the orbit is that you can do it very far off. So you have a very high, very wide establishing shot, or you can do it really close to a subject to show off your subject in a location and really get a lot of parallax around them. Another great way to do this is to use point of interest mode or active track that a lot of drones have built in and you're gonna select your subject and then either you can use point of interest mode and have it move slowly one way or another or you can use active track to get a little bit more manual control about how fast or how slow you want the drone to go around your subject. Even point of interest mode has a fair amount of variation in the speeds that you can use. And this is especially useful in things like real estate where you're gonna be filming a building. The next shot's a really easy one to do, but it really looks great because it's such an unusual perspective that we rarely see. And that's a top-down shot. And basically, you wanna make the drone go up pretty high, maybe as high as you can legally go, or maybe just 100, 200 feet and then move to the left or to the right as your subject maybe is in that area. So here, in this case, our subject is walking through the mine and then we're gonna move the drone with them. And you can do this in a couple of different ways. You can either have the drone overtake them where they come into frame and then goes faster than them so that they move out of frame, or you can have the drone track with them and keep them in the same spot in the frame. And on the top down shot too, you can do it either side to side, left or right, which is my favorite, but you can also do it front to back, depending on how you're going to want to show your subject in that area. This next one's a really simple one. Again, it's just a push in or pull back shot, straight in, straight back, but you can do some variations of it that will make it more interesting. So for the simple push in, you're basically just gonna push forward. Now there's a secret here that if you wanna make it faster when you're in a very large area like we are today, that you can actually double the speed of the drone. That only works in editing and only if there's nothing in the frame of the drone that moves at a normal speed that people can see. Because obviously if there are people walking around and all of a sudden they're moving at double speed, people are gonna notice that and it's gonna look weird. So only do it when it's a static subject like a landscape or something like that. But you can give your drone a lot more feeling of motion and speed if you do that. But what's cool with the push-in shot or the pullback shot is you can add some gimbal movement to add a lot more flavor. So instead of just pushing straight in, you can start with the gimbal pointed down. And then as you push in like this, you're gonna roll the gimbal up just a little bit so that the gimbal slowly comes up, the tilt of the gimbal comes up to reveal the area that the drone is flying into. And this is particularly great as an establishing shot to show off where you're headed or where your subject might be going into. The next one is one of my favorites and that's the reveal shot. And essentially you wanna find something that you can move through, move around, move over, that's gonna reveal what's beyond it. This is very enticing to keep people's interest because it's constantly showing more information to your audience. So you can reveal a subject or reveal a location if you're gonna go over a ridge line of trees or around a building to show what's on the other side. It's gonna keep people very interested. But the reveal shot is when you can't underestimate how great it looks when you're moving into a location. And a great thing about the reveal shot is it doesn't have to just be up and over, but it can be around the side. It could be a lot of different variations. The main thing is you wanna put your subject behind something or on the other side of something and then come around it to reveal what's on the other side of that obstacle. 
Next up is tracking from the side. And this is really easy to do if you're just gonna move sideways along with your subject and keep them in frame. It's great for showing your subject moving between locations. But just like many of the other moves I'm showing you on this, there's ways to use some of the intelligent flight modes of drones to make this easier, like active track. The great thing is that when you're using some of the intelligent flight modes, it takes a lot of burden off of you, the drone operator, and lets the drone work for you so that you don't have to concentrate quite as hard. Especially useful if you're filming yourself. Another great way to show your subject moving from one location to the next is the follow behind shot. And there's a couple of variations you can do with this, but the basic most simple is just to follow behind your subject as they're moving from one location to another location. But something that's even a little bit better and a little more fun, a little more exciting is the overtake shot. Now you can do the overtake shot from the front going towards your subject, but I like to do it from behind, kind of as you're following behind them and then overtaking them as they're moving into a new space because it shows your subject, it shows the space, and it kind of gives people an idea of the space and the size of it with your subject in that space and where your subject is going. But you can also do it from the front if you want to give much more of an idea of speed. This is especially useful for when your subject might be on a bike or in a car or something like that and you want to show how fast they're moving. The overtake will be great for that because it will basically double whatever speed the drone or the car vehicle person is moving at, which helps it feel a lot more energetic. Another absolute staple drone shot is the simple jib shot, and that's where you're just coming straight up or straight down around a subject or behind something to show something on the other side. It's kind of like a reveal shot, but the jib up shot, jib down shot can be very different in that it focuses a lot more on a subject in a location and then reveals more information. A really great way to spice the jib shot up or uh, make it a little bit different, a little bit more dynamic, is to add a gimbal movement too. So you tilt your gimbal up or down as your jib shot is moving the opposite direction. So it keeps your subject in the same place in frame, but shows the world, the everything there nearby moving around them. Low and slow is uh, one that I really like because it gives so much more movement and so much more motion. And basically you're doing variations of things like orbits or push in, pull back shots, things like that, but you're doing it really low and maybe fairly slow so that you get all this foreground movement, all this movement around your subject, around the area, and it gives people a whole lot more sense of motion and movement, and it just looks really, really cool. So low and slow is a great one. You do have to be a lot more careful because obviously you're much closer to hitting stuff and you could very easily crash your drone. I think one of the coolest ways you can move your drone when you're in locations, showing subjects, whatever, is combination movements. And that's where you basically take a bunch of the movements that we've talked about today and combine them together. So you might orbit around something while you're also climbing up and panning down, or you might be coming down while you're panning up and moving to the left or the right. There's a lot of basically endless combinations, but it gives a massive amount of movement. It's showing and revealing tons of information to your audience, so it keeps people very interested, and it's extremely powerful as a storytelling tool. So don't forget to work on your storytelling movements. And if you wanna learn how to do that using something like subject tracking or active track, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video right here. I'll walk you through all the steps. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below, or join my live stream Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I will see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.